Welcome back friends and today we have the continuation of our part of introduction to organic chemistry. The first session was very long so I was forced to cut it so as to continue in, the, in this session. So again we are continuing with the introduction to organic chemistry and this is not an introduction in such but it's just the definition of organic chemistry because introduction to organic chemistry is very long we study it in many sessions so don't worry, don't lose your hope just we shall reach to the end together and you will understand everything so now I am starting with the unique uniqueness of carbon or unique properties of carbon enjoy the session Unique properties of carbon. Uniqueness. Uniqueness. Uniqueness of carbon. Uniqueness of carbon. Now, if you have studied inorganic chemistry, I hope you know that carbon it is the group four element. Carbon is the group for element. So let's start with the inorganic chemistry first or the, the position of, the, of carbon in the periodic table. In the periodic table, in the periodic table, uh, in the periodic table, carbon is group 4. Group 4 element. Group 4 element. And in, in terms of atomic number, carbon has atomic number of 6 and mass number of 12. However, we have different uh, isotopes carbon, of carbon. We have carbon 14 and different. But we will mainly be talking of these 6 because uh, we are not talking much of the mass number. We are talking much of the atomic number, the number 4 electrons which are present in an atom four of carbon. Now these are four elements if we oh, we are writing its electronic configuration that means it will be 1s2 1s2 2s2 and then 2p 2p2 this will be the electronic configuration of carbon but if we are we are Drawing the electronic configuration of carbon in the orbitals, so it will be uh, 1s2, this will appear like this, 1s, and then 2s2, so it will appear like this, 2s, and then 2p2, it will appear like this. So, uh, this is the concept of, of general chemistry. If you didn't understand the uh, general chemistry, this is the electronic progression of carbon, carbon 6. So, if you didn't understand the concepts of general chemistry with the electronic progression, it will be very difficult for you to understand me in this part. And not only in this part, but I hope, I hope you understand me. Don't you worry. But if, if you don't understand this at all, if you don't understand this at all, don't worry. Just write the electronic progression of carbon uh, according to, uh, to how you know in, in your O level. Because some of the concepts which I'll be explaining here, uh, you can use your, your O level electronic progression, which is 2, uh, which is 2, 4. So some of the concepts you use are this, and some of the concepts you use this. All of these are important because uh, you learn the uh, O level in order to be able to study other concepts. Uh, now, by knowing uh, the return propagation of carbon, knowing the atomic number of carbon, now we can start discussing about the uniqueness of carbon. How carbon is, is it's different from other compounds, uh, other elements, either group 4 and even other other groups. In terms of return propagation, in terms of uh, its ability to undergo different types of bonding, in terms of uh, its ability to undergo different types of uh, hybridization and things. 
like that which enables for a variety number of organic compounds. So we are discussing the uniqueness of carbon because in all organic compounds they contain carbon. All organic compounds they contain carbon. And not only they contain carbon, but also uh, the carbon in the organic compound show uniqueness. The organic compounds they are not similar as how in organic compounds they are. That's why we are discussing the uniqueness of carbon. So carbon form a very large number of compounds. Form a very large number of compounds. Carbon itself, compounds of carbon, they reach four millions. Four millions, only compounds of carbon. This is far more than the number of compounds of all other elements put together, which is less than 100,000. So the compounds of all other elements, if we collect them, they do not reach even 100,000. But only compounds of carbon, they are more than 4 million. Now what is the secret of carbon? Why is carbon able to form a vast number of compounds? Why is carbon able to form a vast number of carbon? Why this is impossible with other compounds or other elements? That's what we want to discuss in this session. So carbon has this unique property of forming so many compounds because of the reasons explained below. Now our first reason here is the ability of forming multiple bonds. Ability, ability of forming multiple bonds. Now I will take you back to general chemistry. When we are discussing of the concepts of multiple bonds, what does this mean? Multiple bonds, when you are talking about multiple bonds, multiple bonds, that means there is a double or triple bond. Double or triple bond. So, a double bond. A double bond. When you are talking of a double bond, double bond that means it is, for example, carbon. Carbon. This is double bond. We have one bond here and another bond here. But triple bond, a triple is carbon. Carbon. So, it is very important for you to understand the origin of double and triple bond according to the general chemistry. Where is the double bond originating from? Now, if you didn't understand the concept of double bond and triple bond in general chemistry, don't worry. We just dig into the general chemistry. Now, what we are saying is that if we have double bond like this, what among these bonds it is the sigma bond? Sigma bond. And this is the pi bond. So there is no specification here. If we say this is the sigma, this is pi, it's okay, no problem. But one thing that you need to understand is that if we have two bonds like this, one among them is sigma and one among them is pi, we cannot form a pi bond in the absence of sigma bond. Sigma bond is stronger than pi bond. So pi bond, because it is weak, it can't be formed in the absence of sigma bond. So if we have a single bond like this, this will be a sigma bond. Will it be a sigma bond? Why? As I told you, sigma bond, by property sigma bond, it is strong. It is stronger than pi bond. And why it is strong? Because, because, because it is formed by hybridized hybridized orbitals hybridized orbitals with low amount low amount of energy 
low amount of energy. So this is very important for you to understand. You can see the, the small concepts, but they are very important for you to understand. Because even in, in your general chemistry, you can be asking, why sigma bond is the stronger than pi bond? So one among the major differences between sigma bond and pi bond is that the pi bond, pi bond is formed by unhybridized hybridized orbitals while sigma bond is formed from hybridized orbitals hybridized orbitals so the, the pi bond they are formed by unhybridized orbital while the sigma bond they are formed by hybridized orbital now what is the, the importance of this being hybridized or unhybridized if you remember the concept of hybridization we say that if you remember in general chemistry we discussed that we say that hybridization hybridization aim to generate orbitals with the approximately the same amount of energy so let's say one orbital had high energy and one orbital has the lower energy hybridization will produce orbitals which will have the same amount of energy which is in between the energy of the two orbitals so let's say for example in our energy level diagram let's say we have our s orbital here and let's say we have our p orbital here and then we are doing hybridization of the p and s orbital so when we are hybridizing this we will get another orbital sp hybridized orbital sp hybridized orbital but if we are looking at this orbital if here is a low energy and here is the high, highest energy here is the lowest energy if we are looking at this hybridized orbital it will be having lower energy as compared to this unhybridized p orbital so the pi bond c pi bond c always they are formed by unhybridized and because this orbital has higher energy than this hybridized this will be more unstable a bond formed by an hybridized orbital which is pi bond will be more unstable because it is formed by orbitals which have higher energy while a bond formed by sigma bond it is the bond formed by hybridized orbital with the lower energy because the orbitals they have lower energy they will be more stable more stable because they have lower energy so that's the very important concept for you to understand that the sigma bond is stronger than the pi bond why it is stronger because it is formed by hybridized orbitals with the lower energy then after understanding the sigma bond is stronger than pi bond the next thing for you to know is that if we have multiple bonds one among the bonds it is sigma and another bond is pi but if we have the sigma bond like this this bond will be a sigma bond now if these two bonds one among the bonds it is sigma and another bond is, is pi one among the bonds is sigma and another bond is pi what is the origin or what enable carbon now to form a pi bond because we are discussing a unique property of carbon to form multiple bond now why carbon it is able to form pi bond and what is the origin of pi bond now let's continue we are just continuing here we are just continuing as i said here the pi bonds are formed by unhybridized orbitals now what is the secret behind in the case what is the secret behind in the case of carbon 
Let's see the circuit behind in the case of carbon. Now, in the, in the case of carbon, carbon is small in size. It is small, it has small atomic size. Small atomic size. Now, this small atomic size of carbon enable it to do the sideway overlap of the p orbital. Remember, I told you that signal bond is formed by the by the hybridized orbit. But not only the hybridized orbit, also the sigma bond is formed by formed by n to n overlap overlap of atomic orbitals end to end overlap end to end overlap if you remember the the, the overlap of atomic orbitals you have end to end and then we have the sideway overlap now due to small atomic size of carbon due to small atomic size of carbon i want to illustrate here what happens uh, what happens in the in the molecule of carbon in order to form multiple bond, what happens in the carbon atom in order to form multiple bond? Now, carbon, for example, if we have carbon here, then if we have another carbon here, we'll have we'll have a p orbital double shape, and then another p orbital double shape. Also, we'll have another p orbital this side. Also another p orbital this side. Now, this is what we call the end to end overlap, end to end overlap forming the sigma bond. Sigma bond end to end overlap. This is the end to end overlap of atomic orbitals which form the sigma bond. Now, let's see what happens to form a multiple bond. What happens in the carbon atom until it forms the, the multiple bonds? Now here, the carbon atom contains another p orbital and another p orbital. Also it contains another p orbital here and another p orbital. Not only one, one is just like a presentation, but they are many. So, in order to form a pi bond, this and this, they must undergo sideways overlap. They must undergo sideways, sideways overlap. This is overlap. Sideways overlap to form pi bond. They must undergo sideways over. So what happens here? Let us uh, illustrate what happens here, so as uh, for you to be understand, uh, for you to to easily understand what I am explaining. What happens in the carbon atom, so as it undergoes the sideways overlap. So what happens here is that this carbon will have a p orbital going like this way and coming back here and then this carbon will have a p orbital going like this way then coming back here so in order to form a single bond there must be two so we we'll draw another p orbital here coming back here another p orbital here coming back here so what we have drawn here what we have drawn here it is carbon Double bond carbon. Here is our sigma bond, which you can say is this one, and here for these for these p orbitals is our pi bond. This is carbon double bond carbon. If we want to illustrate carbon triple bond, carbon triple bond carbon. How can you illustrate it? 
we need to add two p orbitals at the top. So we can write we can add another p orbital on this side, then p orbital on this side, then p orbital on this side, and p orbital on this side. What we have written here is carbon triple bond carbon. This is carbon triple bond carbon. So these are two orbitals and these two orbitals. These two orbitals they are it is the single pi one and this are the single pi one. And then for this compound it has it can has one hydrogen and then one hydrogen. Hydrogen we can write it at this way. And then in this side you can write also hydrogen. So hydrogen we draw a lamp because it has only an S orbital. It has only an S orbital. So ability to form sideway overlap. Sideway overlap. This is what we call as the sideway. Sideway overlap. Of P orbitals. And these P orbitals, they are unhybridized. They are unhybridized. Is how we, we can we can discuss in our second point different hybridization that carbon can undergo. So now we are discussing about the ability of forming multiple bonds. Why it can form multiple bonds? It is because of it is small atomic size. The small atomic size allow sideway overlap of atomic orbitals. Allow sideway overlap of atomic orbitals. Small atomic size of carbon allow sideway overlap of atomic orbitals to form multiple and triple bonds. So for now, for this point, we are ending up here. The ability of carbon to form multiple bonds, which are double and triple bonds. Why? Because of the small atomic size. So we are saying carbon can form single, double or triple bond. And not only with carbon, it can also form this kind of bond even with other atoms such as nitrogen. So what you are saying is that carbon can form multiple bond with other carbon atoms and it can also form multiple bond with atoms of other elements such as oxygen, sulfur and nitrogen. Now, the ability of carbon to form multiple bond is explained by its small, small atomic radius which enable it to form strong covalent bond even through sideway overlapping of atomic orbitals in pi bond formation, the condition which is necessary for multiple bond formation. For multiple bond to be formed, we must have the sideway overlap. And because carbon has small atomic size, it is easier for it to undergo sideway overlap of atomic orbitals and hence to form the pi bonds. And the pi bonds, they the one which are multiple bonds. Now we are moving to the second property. I just rub here, but my explanation is still still the same. We we'll just have uh, some few additions, but the second property is the ability to undergo different types of hybridization. Ability ability of undergoing different types of hybridization. Now, carbon has a bit to undergo many types of hybridization. And why this happened, we shall see later in my explanation. But remember, in this diagram, I have not loved it because I want to explain one thing before I am going further more. I told you one thing, it is, it is very important point for you to remember. I told you that pi bond, they are formed by hybridized, 
आगे अभिदय आगे अभिदय जो क्वाइल आई टोल्ड यू द सिग्मा बॉन्ड इज फॉर्म बाय हाइब्रिडाइज्ड ऑर्बिटल नाउ व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग हाइब्रिडाइजेशन ऑफ कार्बन I know sometimes for uh, for many of students they know that the hybridization of certain compound that mean certain element remain the same no hybridization of an element depends on the compound in some of the compounds such as carbon carbon it can undergo different types of hybridization because of its uniqueness i know we discussed this in general chemistry but i know some of you you have not uh, viewed my video and have not studied general chemistry So I will review the, the the concept of hybridization of carbon in the molecules here. So in order to understand hybridization or different hybridization of carbon, we must take one carbon among these two. Now let's say you are dealing with this carbon as a for concern. If we take this carbon or we take this one, the answers or your final type of hybridization will remain the same. So don't hold that uh what will happen to my final answer your final answer will remain the same regardless uh changing the type of uh, hybridization now your final answer of the type of uh, hybridization will remain the same regardless changing the the carbon either this one or this one so let us choose this carbon So in this carbon we have how many sigma bond and we have many how, we have how many pi bonds by knowing we have how many pi bonds and we have many how many sigma bonds it will be easier for you to understand how many anhydrides orbitals they are present and how many hydrides orbitals they are present so now i can just run uh, one of these carbon and even for the sake of this single carbon which will remain we can use it to, to explain the concept of of hybridization as we say the bond which is formed by the end to end over here it is the sigma bond so we have one sigma bond and as we said this is also the sigma bond we have two sigma bond but for this compound because as i told you this is c triple bond c for this compound we have how many pi bond we will form two one of them in this one and one of them in this one so even for example here if here we have hydrogen here we have hydrogen the bond here will be sigma here we have one sigma bond then we have a pi bond another pi bond So for the case of this carbon let's say it's carbon number 1 this carbon will require two sigma bond and will require two pi bond now for the case let's say of carbon double bond carbon hydrogen hydrogen then hydrogen hydrogen so this is the sigma bond i mean this one is the sigma bond this is also the sigma Here is what the C. We have one pi. So how many sigma bond they are here? We have the sigma, and we have one pi. Remember, we say this is formed by hybridizing. Only this one is formed by anhydridizing. So that means the number. of orbitals required to be hybridized in this molecule or in this carbon they are different from the number of orbitals required to be hybridized in this carbon however all of them they are compounds containing two carbons so don't worry about the number of carbons but the important thing for you to understand here is the type of hybridization now let's dig deep how to see different types of of hybridization in these different types of compounds how the hybridization state of carbon differs in different uh compounds of carbon now as i have already explained here that this will require two hybridized and two unhybridized but this will require 
three hybridized and one unhybridized. So let's consider our electronic configuration of carbon. We say it is one plus two. One plus two. We see it is two s two and it is it is two p two. Now this is our ground state. Our ground state. In the excited state, one among these electrons in 2s will be excited to 2p in the excited state. So, in excited state, it will be 1s2, 2s1, and then 2p3. One, two, three. Excited state. Now we have seen the ground state and excited state for carbon. So if we let know the ground and excited state, how about the ionization? How about the ionization of these carbons? How do the hybridization of these carbons differ? Now let's start with our uh, Carbon is a single bond. Let's say it is a carbon, single bond carbon. Carbon is a single bond. And for, for the case of carbon, carbon it is tetravalent. It forms four bonds. We will see uh, one among the unique properties of carbon. But carbon it is tetravalent. It must form the four bonds in order to become octet. In order to become octet to have the eight electrons in the outermost electronic shell or in the outermost shell, it must gain four electrons. It must gain four electrons or it must share four electrons. Actually, it, it doesn't gain but it, it tends it tends to share. So this carbon requires four bonds. Now, if it if it requires four bonds, and let's say for example. Here it is the bond with the another carbon. But here they are bond with, with the hydrogen. So let's say here we have hydrogen, here we have hydrogen, and here we have hydrogen. So what will be the bond now between, between carbon and hydrogen? What will be the bond? Explaining the concept of sigma and pi bond. This will be a sigma bond, this will be sigma, this will be sigma. And this will be sigma. Now, if you take this to be carbon number one, how many sigma bonds will we require for the carbon number one? And how many pi bonds will we require for the carbon number one? How many sigma and how many pi bonds? For, for, the, for the example here, for our example here, we will need four sigma bonds and no pi bond. Four sigma and no pi bond. Four sigma and no pi bond. So, if we want to form a carbon with four single bonds, that means it is an alkane. Alkane. I hope you understand from your all level chemistry. Alkane. So, if we want to form an alkane with no double bond, we need to have four sigma bond. And remember, I said sigma bonds are formed from hybridized orbitals. So that means we need how many? We need four hybridized we need four hybridized orbitals. We need four hybridized orbital. So that means because the, the, the orbitals with the single electrons, here they are four, we need to hybridize all of them for the case of this uh, alkane, for the case of this compound, we need to hybridize all of these 
uh, free to organize all these orbitals. So we will idealize the orbitals and then at the end of, of, of our hybridization we will see is 1s2 but here all of these orbitals they will be hybridized and they will form an orbital with approximately equal amount of energy having four and paired electrons. So in this we will have one of the bond is bonded to carbon and another here is bonded to hydrogen, here is bonded to hydrogen and here is bonded to hydrogen. So one bond among this is the bond with the other carbon. Let's say it's this one. But another bond, this one is with the hydrogen, this one with the hydrogen, and this one with the hydrogen. So the hybridization state of carbon here is sp3. Don't say sp cubic, no, it's sp3. We have hybridized one s orbital and three p orbital. So it's sp3 hybridization. Hybridization. Or sometimes you can say sp3 hybridized. This carbon in alkane, it is sp3 hybridized. We need four sigma bond. One is the bond with another carbon, and three they are bonds with the hydrogen. I hope you have understood the hybridization state of carbon in this alkane. Now let's move to alkene and alkyne. What will be the hybridization state of carbon? What will be the hybridization state of carbon? Now let's solve this compound and start our discussion on these uh, two remaining categories of organic compounds. Now we are, we are moving to we are moving to alkene. We are moving to alkene, and as I said, in the case of alkene. As I said, that in alkene we have carbon double bond carbon, and in this carbon double bond carbon, one among the bond is sigma, and another is pi. Also, in alkene we have two hydrogen bonded, hydrogen, hydrogen. So, if we want to know the hybridization of this carbon, that means here is another sigma bond, and here is another. Sigma bond. So we'll have how many? One, two, three sigma bond. So we'll have three sigma and we'll have how many pi? Only one. So one, one, pi bond. And as we know, pi bond is formed from an hybridized orbit. So here we will need three hybridized. Orbital and you will need one anhydride orbital. We need one anhydride orbital. Now I am having the last step of hybridization. From the ground state to the excited state, it is the same because it is the same atom of carbon. Now let us draw the Hybridized state of the carbon, hybridized state of this carbon. Now it will be one S, it will be one S, two, and we need how many? Three hybridized orbitals. We need three hybridized orbitals. So if we need three hybridized orbitals, that means we take one S and two P orbitals. So we will miss 1s and 2, two p orbitals. So it will be 1, 2, 3. So if we have, we have taken 1s and 2 p orbitals, that means one of the orbitals remain unhybridized. We need it here. So this will be sp2 hybridized. And this will be an 
haikuidai hiyo vitu in these three sigma bonds one bond will be with carbon another bond is the hydrogen another bond is the hydrogen but this a pi bond is with the another carbon so this orbital is the orbital which is used for formation of pi pi bond is the orbital which is used for formation of, of pi bond. So the hybridization will be sp2 because we have hybridized one orbital of s and two p orbitals. One s orbital and two p orbitals. So one s orbital and two p orbitals will get sp2 hybridization. This is what happens in all carbons having the double bond. All carbons having the double bond, they undergo sp2 hybridization. Now let's move to the to the alkyl, but I hope for the student who is following me, uh, he or she will already be knowing that what will happen in alkyl. Let's move to alkyl. So for the student who is following, at a point of view, alkyl, takoki na tokea, takoki na tokea kitugani. Now in alkyl, uh, we have two sigma bond and we have two pi bond so in hybridization in hybridization we will have one s then we will have we need two sigma and two pi so two sigma will be it will be sp hybridization And then two, and I will die. The, this will form two, two pi bonds. This will form two pi bonds. So, yeah, I hope you have already understood about different types of, of hybridization of carbon. Even types of hybridization of carbon is in order to enable to bond with the uh, double and a triple bond. So, another day if we see uh, double bond or if we see triple bonds, it will be easier for you to understand. It will be easier for you to understand uh, the type of polarization, which is that in the formation of the double bond, or which is that in the formation of the of the triple bond. And that will be the second property. The second property of carbon second property of carbon now we are moving to the third property third property which is high ability of forming covalent bonds high ability of forming Covalent bonds. Higher bit of forming covalent bonds. Carbon has the property of what we call as catenation. Catenation. Uh, however, uh, it is the property, unique property number four, but that they also related with this unique property number three. So, carbon having four valency. Four valence, that means the outermost shell has four electrons. As I say, if we are writing the all level electron progression, the outermost shell has two, four electrons. Or sometimes if you are writing one S2, then two S2, then two P, two. The outermost shell, which is shell number two, will have four electrons. So it requires uh, four electrons in order for it to become in order for it to become octet or to become stable. So what we are saying is that if carbon having four valence electron in forming ionic bond, it must either gain four electron or it must either gain four electron or lose four electron. So it is impossible. Carbon you are form kabisa. 
Identity bond. It normally form covalent bonds. It normally form covalent bonds. So being in a group 4, the electronegativity of carbon is too small for carbon to gain electron from most element to form to form carbon which is negatively charged. But carbon it also has too high electronegativity for it to lose four electrons to form carbon which is positively charged. So it can't gain or it can't lose electron due to its electronegativity and due to its property. So carbon therefore form covalent bond with a large number of elements including the hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur which are found in the living organisms. So that is also the unique property form of carbon. The higher rate of forming covalent bonds. But the fourth property is catenation. Catenation. Ability, ability of undergoing catenation, catenation. Now, on a different slope, there is the small difference between this and this. This ability to form covalent bonds, it, the ability of carbon to form covalent bonds with other elements. For example, uh, sulfur, oxygen, phosphorus, and nitrogen. But catenation is the ability of atoms of the same element to join and to form long stable chain. So, for example, this is unique only in carbon. It has the ability to bond and to form long chains which are stable. So we are saying that catenation is the bonding of atoms of the same element. Bonding of atoms of the same element into large and stable chain. The chain may be open or cyclic, blanched or straight. Open or cyclic, blanched or straight. Carbon can undergo catenation because it has comparatively small atomic size and small repulsion between its valency electron. So these are the unique properties of carbon. The very important one, they were the first two. They were the first two ability to form multiple bond and ability to undergo different types of organization. Ability to form uh, covalent bonds and uh, ability to undergo catenation. They have no longer explanation and as the first one. Now let's move to the differences between organic and inorganic compounds. We have discussed many things about the properties of carbon and even when we are going to discuss about the difference between organic and inorganic, inorganic compounds, I will, be, I will be dealing with the organic compounds but more uh, it's the matter of carbon itself and how the compounds they behave. Now organic and inorganic compounds possess different composition, nature, structure and properties. Organic compounds are studied as a separate branch of chemistry because of the following reasons. Kwanzaa, the existence of innumerable organic compounds. Organic compounds, there are many numbers compared with the inorganic ones. Also, the properties of organic compounds are distinctly different from those of inorganic compounds. So, in this uh, geyser series of advanced chemistry, we have a table which uh, tend to, to summarize the difference between organic and inorganic compound and we just be leading these uh, organic compounds I mean these differences quickly because they are not so much important it's rarely for you to be asked in the exam so that's why it's not so much important for you to, to understand them so first is the, is the composition organic compounds usually they are made up of carbon and usually they are made up of carbon hydrogen bonds that is in terms of composition. Also, they are composed of few elements. Normally, it's the carbon first, then we have hydrogen, we have oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. Few elements. They are made up of few elements, but we have many categories of organic compounds. But in terms of inorganic compounds, many they contain carbon. Many may contain carbon. Some of them they may, may contain so many. It's not many may contain carbon but usually contain metal and other elements 
so that they not contain carbon and hydrogen bonds. In organic compound, they do not contain carbon and hydrogen bonds. They are composed of all known elements. While organic compounds, they are made up of few elements, but the inorganic compounds, they are composed of all known elements. When we are talking of the source, the major or the general source of organic compounds is the living matter, that is plants and animals. But the general obtained source of non-organic compounds, they are non-living matters, such as minerals. In terms of nature, organic compounds, they are biological in nature, while in organic, they are mineral in nature. In terms of physical state, many of the organic compounds, they may, may be gases, liquids, or solids. But most of the inorganic compounds, they are solids. Organic, they can be gases, liquid, or solids. But in organic, they are, many of them, they are solids. In terms of number, organic compounds, they are many as compared with the inorganic. In terms of isomerism, organic compounds, they undergo different types of isomerism, as we shall discuss later. But in organic, only complex compounds, they undergo isomerism. Other than organic compounds, they can't undergo isomerism. In terms of homologous series, organic compounds, they can be arranged into homologous series. While in organic compounds, they can be classified as acids, bases, and salts, but not in homologous series or different families. In terms of size, organic compounds, they are large in size and they have large molecular weight as compared with the inorganic ones. In terms of flammability, flammability, uh, Geyser has mistakenly written here. Organic compounds, they are flammable. They are flammable. Organic compounds, they are flammable. Because you have studied some of the sources of organic compounds, they are petroleum. Petroleum which is flammable and it, it can even explode. Not only petroleum, even many gases we are using in, in, in lab. We are using alcohol as the source of fuel. So they are flammable. Kerosene. Organic companies, they are flammable. So they are really flammable and they really undergo combustion oxygen. But in organic compounds, they are not flammable. And thus, they are not really combustible in oxygen. In terms of types of bond, most of the organic compounds, they are made of covalent bond. But the, most of the inorganic, they are made up of the uh, ionic bond. Thermal stability, organic compounds, they are less stable, while the inorganic, they are more stable. Why? It is because organic compounds, they are made up of covalent bond, which is less stable in heat as compared with the inorganic compounds in the, uh, the, the ionic bond in the inorganic compound, which is more stable in heat. Conduction. Organic compounds, they are poor conductor of heat and electricity, while in organic, they are best. In terms of rate of reaction, organic compounds, they undergo a slow rate of reaction, while in organic, they undergo fast. In terms of solubility, the organic compound, they are insoluble in water, but soluble in organic solvents such as benzene and toluene, while the organic one, they are undergoing a different type of, of reaction. So, Let's do a quick about the classification of organic compound because we'll do this uh, later or we we'll study this in detail later. So let's uh, do a quick classification. Classification. Classification of organic compound. So we have a variety of organic compounds and in order to easier their study, we need to classify them into groups. We have millions of organic compounds. And the major families of organic compounds, they are, they are aliphatic, aliphatic, aliphatic compounds, and cyclic compounds. Aliphatic compounds is here and cause in an open chain. Let's say for one to one, you can see, 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 OH, 
COOH. All of these, they are alphatic because they are open. But when you are talking of cyclic, that means maybe you have C, then C, then C, C. You see, it is cyclic. Or you have C, C, C. So it is cyclic. Or you have C, C. Or if it has six common C. C, C, how about C? So you see, the cyclic compounds, they are cyclic because uh, the arrangement of, uh, of carbon is cyclic. But they are part, they contain the open chain. They are part, they contain the open chain. So what you are saying that alphatic compound. There are organic compounds open, open carbon chain. So the, the chain may be blanched or straight. May be blanched or straight. When you are saying uh, it is straight, that means it is C, 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 C. This is straight. But when you are saying it is blanched, that means you have C, C. So this is what we call the branch. This is our longest chain. This will be called the, the branch. So it will be regarded as the branch D branch the chain and it, it can contain a single double or triple bond so sometimes in this chain you can see a, a double bond you can see a triple bond somewhere so don't worry about that the matter that if it is open chain if it is open chain then it is alphatic if it is open chain then it is alphatic hydrocarbon so we have our different examples here of alphatic Hydrocarbons. But about cyclic organic compound, these are organic compounds with closed carbon chain structure. Closed carbon straight chain structure. The structure may be blanchly or straight. When you are talking of straight, maybe it is C, 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 C. This is straight cyclic carbon compound. But when you are saying it is branched, that means uh, here maybe you have CH2, then CH3. So this will be cyclic carbon compound, while this one will be the branch. In the absence of this, in the absence of this, this could be called, this could be called as the cycle, cycle of the term. So built for four carbon, anepho, alkane, and the cycle is the cyclic compound. So we are just adding cycle in nomenclature. But in the presence of CH2, CH3. This is not cyclobutane again. We need first to learn this. So it is ethyl ethyl cyclobutane. There is no need of writing the position of this because uh, there is only one group, and if we, are, we want to count this as the cyclic compound, so this will be position number one. But if we have maybe methyl. Then you start counting here because in our alphabetical order, this is the first done this method. So it will be one, two, three. It will be, uh, it will be, we we'll start with one, ethyl, then three, methyl, cyclo, cyclobutane. This is the name of the compound. So this is how the, the blanched. And the straight cyclic carbon compounds they they appear. But also we can classify the the cyclic compound into two major groups. The cyclic compound they can be homocyclic or heterocyclic. They can be homocyclic, homocyclic or heterocyclic. In homocyclic, they contain carbon only. But in heterocyclic, they contain carbon plus another element. Another element. So, in homocyclic carbon, uh, in homocyclic carbon compound, they contain only carbon. 
For example, as I told you here, it is C, C, C. Or if we are putting C, 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 C. So these are the homocytic. But sometimes if you found the compound C, C, then C, then here is an nitrogen. That means it is not a homocyclic again. It is the heterocyclic because it contains nitrogen here. So that is the major difference between homocyclic and heterocyclic. Homocyclic and heterocyclic carbon compound. So don't worry about this uh, classification. Sometimes you can be asking questions, but I hope the questions in this part they are very they are very easy. So homocyclic compound they are compounds in which in which the ring consists of only carbon. Homocyclic the ring consists of only carbon. They are also known as carbocyclic compound. Homocyclic are further divided into alcyclic and aromatic. So in homocyclic homocyclic we can have alcyclic and we can have aromatic alcyclic and aromatic in alcyclic alcyclic company we don't have the benzene ring so in alcyclic company they are formed when a ring of three or more carbon atoms resemble aliphatic compound are contained in homocyclic compound. So for example, if we have the three carbon C, 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 this uh, it can be called a cycle, cycle, uh, I mean this is the cycle, cycle propane. Cyclopropan. And this are uh, the similar, it is similar to propane. It is similar to propane, which could be written as CH3, CH2, CH3. But this has been bonded to this carbon to form a cyclic compound. So because it is cyclic, that's why you call it the cycle propane. This is propane. This is cycle, cycle propane. But in aromatic, the, 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 the phenomenon is different. In aromatic, the phenomenon is different. And one among the unique, the major unique property of aromatic compound is the presence of the benzene ring. Presence of the benzene ring. Aromatic compound are homocyclic compound which contain at least one benzene ring at least one benzene ring so the unique property of this is one benzene ring zinezi kawe pata benzene ring kumi lakini at least one at least one at least one benzene ring so for example a benzene ring it is drawn like this I know many of you you are new organic chemistry. So this is how we can draw a benzene ring. But this is not the actual structure of benzene. The actual structure of benzene is this This is the Now if you don't understand it, these corners here, they are carbon. So we have carbon, we have carbon, we have carbon, we have carbon here. You have carbon here and you have carbon here. But in order to call a benzene ring, it must have alternative multiple bonds. So if this position has multiple bonds, position number two will not have multiple bonds. Number three will have, number four will not have, number five will have, number six will not have. But if these multiple bonds, Many of the they are not static. So they tend to do what we call as the mesomeric effect. They move through a benzene ring. And by that movement, we are forming another molecule, which you can draw it as 
So don't worry about this, we'll discuss more with the Mesomeric effect and things like that. So if this bond is made up by Tutapata, if this bond is made up by Tutapata, if this bond is made up by Tutapata, you see, again, position number one, if you are in position number two, in a corner. Position number two, in a position number one, in a corner. Position number two, in a position number six, in a corner. So, again, these, they undergo motion. So, because these electrons, they undergo movement, a generalized structure of benzene, we draw it as This center cycle, we can draw an arrow showing the direction of rotation of electron and we call it as the Kekule structure. However, it has undergone modification until it may pick up like in the first person to suggest it, he was Kekule, a German chemistry known as Kekule. So, actual benzene, actual benzene, when we are talking of aromatic, aromatic compounds, they, they must contain benzene. Benzene, uh, benzene, it is carbon, 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 and double bond, Double bond, double bond. So if this uh, as three bonds, so up one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one hydrogen. If you look at every carbon, we talk about four bonds. So this, this is the structure of benzene. This is the structure of benzene. This one which I have drawn here is the structure of benzene. But the simplified structure of benzene, we normally, we normally draw it as we normally draw it as this way. And sometimes, don't you wonder when I, I tell you that this corner is covered? Because in advanced chemistry, sometimes you can be asking, uh, name this compound. And you need to know this corner is carbon. We have carbon. This corner we have carbon. If it is the end like this one, it is methyl. And here it is methyl. So for example, this comp uh, this compound it is methyl. One, two, three, four. So this is butan. This is butan. For example, this compound. So don't you wonder in, a, in advanced chemistry because uh, in drawing the structure of this or any compounds, we, we are sometimes using this skeleton. We discuss with the structures of, uh, of organic compounds, but we are sometimes using this skeleton. Don't you wonder anything if you are you are asked to, to name uh, certain certain compounds. So the the aromatic compounds sometimes uh, you can see them as the benzene ring, and then here it contains maybe methyl, and this is called toluene. It is methyl benzene. Methyl, methyl benzene. Methyl group attached to benzene, but another name is toluene. And sometimes you can find a compound like this. You uh, can find a compound like this. Uh, it is a hydroxyl. Hydroxyl benzene, but it is called as phenol. Phenol. Hydroxyl. Hydroxyl benzene. So all of these, they are, they are aromatic carbon compounds. Aromatic carbon compounds. Aromatic carbon compounds. So, they are aromatic carbon compounds. And we have already discussed about the heterocyclic 
heterocyclic carbon compound they contain carbon and and other other elements so let's uh, finish up our discussion by discussing with the classification of carbons in organic compounds classification of carbons in organic compounds so in organic compounds carbon they can be classified as primary secondary tertiary and cotton a primary carbon has bonded to only one carbon for example if we have carbon 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 all of these they are primary carbon because they are bonded only to single carbon but if this carbon has bonded to another carbon here this carbon it is secondary carbon or if this carbon it has bonded to two carbon then it is called tertiary carbon and if it is bonded to four carbon it is called as quaternary carbon so primary secondary tertiary and quaternary it depends on the number of carbon which has bonded to that carbon which we are classifying this will be classified as primary carbon, secondary carbon, tertiary if it bonds to three carbon, but quaternary if it bonds to four carbon. Now this marks the end of our session, and in the next session we will start discussing about the concept of organic reactants. The concept of organic reactants. The concept of organic reactants. We we'll discuss about the concept of uh, nucleophiles, electrophiles, and the free radical. We'll discuss them in the next session. Just stay tuned. Na paleo tu iri kumbo siende kulala. Just do this quiz. I've just taught you uh, some of the nomenclature of organic compounds. So don't worry. Don't say uh, you have taught us a different concept. Then you ask you ask different questions no so for example uh, the, there is a question here classify the, the following compounds classify classify the following compounds classify the following compounds whether whether alphatic whether alphatic hetero cyclic then you homo cyclic or oh, aromatic so uh, compound A, compound A, let me give you this is my compound A, this is my compound A, and then compound B, compound B, it is then compound C. Compound C it is then compound D compound D compound D it is compound D compound E compound E it is And the compound F, it is compound F, it is like this. So, yeah, you can classify these uh, compounds. And this marks the end on the next session. Next session, we we'll discuss organic, organic reactants, organic reactants.
Thank you.